So today I thought I'd share a witchy room tour. Um, after I filmed it, it was kind of long, so I thought I'd just break it up into two different parts. So first I thought I'd share with you my main working altar. Um, on the altar I like to keep that plant, or like fake plant arrangement. I got that from Michael's during the Halloween season last year, but I really love it. Um, these, gray, these white petals have like a grayish tint. Um, which gives it sort of a creepy look, and I love these overflowing things on the side. I just, I just love the way that looks. Um, let's see, on the altar itself, I have a few things on here that um, sometimes I take off the altar when I'm actually doing magical workings, but otherwise I keep them on here. Uh, one is this um, cauldron wax burner. I love this thing. It's a, it's, it looks like a cauldron. You can burn wax in there. When I plug it in, it glows green. Kind of, the lights kind of hit the wall there. <laughs> I love this thing. Um, here I have a witch's brew candle. I just keep it on the altar when I'm not using it. I uh, love this candle. It's got um, frankincense, myrrh, and mugwort um, infused in it, so I think it's cool. I have this fairy on my altar. Um, when I actually use, um, when I'm conducting a spell and I have herbs that I'd like to use, sometimes I put the herbs in this little bowl here, or I might put my stones in there. In the meantime, I just keep like a crystal in that little... Um, bowl. Uh, here I have, sometimes I use this for scrying, um, and then I also have these two cards. I keep these on my altar, and I love them, and they're illustrated by Brian Froud. Um, he's an, an artist, a writer, and illustrator of fairies, and I just love them. I love this one. Uh, this is the Queen of the Bad Fairies. I put this on my altar just to remind me to constantly work on myself. Um, you know, uh, probably most of us have some, um, some habits we might call them bad habits or at least habits that are not very <laughs> constructive that we work on. So I have this on here to remind me to constantly seek to improve myself. Um, this card I really, really love. This is called the Green Woman and it comes from Brian Froud's Fairies Oracle. But um, this represents um, success in the face of adversity. So he goes on to say, like in his book he describes it as, when a seed falls, a tree grows. So the idea is um, we, t we can accept what's coming to us even if it doesn't, we're not happy about it, but we know that we can grow in the process and, um, and become successful. So I just love that card. I like to keep that on my altar. Got a little uh, pinnacle here. I love this little bowl. I use this as my salt water bowl. I got this in Iceland last year. I love that beautiful red glaze in the inside of the bowl. Let's see. Um, here, um, I got this in Iceland last year too. I had this in a haul uh, from a couple of videos ago, um, but I forgot to mention a couple things about it. Um, it is an ox horn tankard, and it, it is uh, from oxen that are bred to be draft animals, so it is ethically sourced. Um, you can drink out of it. What I forgot to mention, so back here is the, on the bottom of it is a maker's mark, and I can't remember the name of the company, but, um, but apparently um, the company that makes these oxen horn tankers also supplies the tankards to the Game, of Th the Game of Thrones set. So like if you watch Game of Thrones and are drinking from one of these, <laughs> um, it comes from the same company that, um, that I bought it from. And the shop where we bought um, our tankards really just hyped that up and make a big deal out of it. But it was funny because I went to, um, I found these tankards in a shop. Um, I was traveling with mom, my mom, and when she saw these, she said, Lorianne, I have got to get one of these for your grandma, which is her mom, because my grandma, who was 91 years old last year, um, she is a huge fan of Game of Thrones. <laughs> so she loves her Game of Thrones, so mom got her one of these tankards. Um, so we imagine she probably drinks her mint iced tea in this, but I thought that was funny. So um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, I've got a, a wand here and what I use as an athame, a little bell. Um, got my cauldron. I love this cauldron. I just picked it up not too long ago. I replaced my old one that was starting to rust. What I really love about this cauldron is it's small, but yet it's very wide on the top. It's a four inch wide diameter cauldron, so it's very easy, very convenient to use. I love that it's got that wide, um, that the, the top of the cauldron is, is wide, so I love that. Um, and then I have um, several items on the altar that represent the four elements 
and um, when I'm conducting magical workings or spell work, uh, I do like to draw in the energies of the four elements to aid me in my in my workings. Um, so first I have this, I love, love this. Again, I, I, I picked up a lot of things from Iceland last year to use in my spell work, and one of them is this lava. This is a piece of lava, comes from Iceland, it's got this uh, this hole in the middle where you can put a, uh, a tea light in there and so you know when I light that tea light and it's you know contained within this lava this represents fire to me and so in my spellcraft fire I consider fire to ignite the spell over here I've got an incense burner um, I either burn incense as a stick or sometimes I put loose incense um, in my cauldron but um, the incense and the smoke that um, that glides across my altar that comes from the incense represents air and air breathes life into a spell um, here I have a, a salt. Um, I, I like to use black salt. Sometimes I use uh, other salts um, on my altar. I put that in my salt water bowl. Salt represents earth, and uh, earth grounds the spell. And finally, I've got full moon blessed water here. Um, or, uh, it obviously represents water, and water nourishes the spell. So, so anyway, that's uh, the altar. Not a whole lot on it, but um, but uh, it it works for me. And let's see, over here, I've got this really cute dress form. I love this thing. It's a pretty little dress form. Um, I like to keep this cape on it. Uh, I got this cape. This was part of a Halloween costume quite a, quite a few years ago. I love it, though. It's black velvet, and it's got purple and black lace. I think it looks so pretty, and I like it on this dress form. And it's also where I hang my, um, my you know, witchy necklaces there. And... Um, in a minute, I'll show you uh, what it looks like without the cape on it. I think it looks really pretty. I like having it in my witchy room. And I'm going to go look up the, uh, the website where I got it. Off the top of my head, I can't think of it. But uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like without the cape. So this is what the dress form looks like uh, without any uh, without the cape on it. Um, it's a metal dress form. And I looked it up in the... The, I think one of the cheapest places to find it is lakeside.com. Uh, so if you type in, like in Google search, if you type in lakeside.com and then you type in dress form, um, this metal dress form comes up and it's 20 bucks. It comes shipped in uh, several pieces. You just put the pieces together. So yeah, I love this thing. Um, so that's the dress form. So on this side of the room, I like to keep my, um, my tapestry and a chair to sit on. Um, the tapestry, I really like it. I got it from Dress Lily. That's D-R-E-S-S-L-I-L-Y, Dress Lily. They have a ton of tapestries to choose from. A lot of witchy-like tapestries, Halloween tapestries. Um, I don't think this one they have in stock anymore. I went to look for it and I couldn't find it, so maybe it sold out, but they have a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, I love this chair. I like to sit in that chair and read read my books or you know work on, read through my grimoire um, that's my grimoire sitting on the side on the um, on that side there um, or I have a TV in the room sometimes I watch my YouTube videos like my witchy videos in here um, I love this chair it's like a really pretty cream colored crushed velvet and I found that at Salvation Army a while back so I just love it <laughs> it's really comfortable to sit on um, let's see what else do I have on the wall got a couple of decorations up there. This right here is a plaque. I got this in Transylvania. I visited Transylvania, I want to say like five or six years ago, um, and you know, in Romania. But um, the reason why I went there is I wanted to see um, Braun Castle, which is, which was the, uh, the inspiration uh, in Bram Stoker's Dracula novel. So he, <coughs> he based Dracula's castle on Braun Castle in Transylvania and here's kind of a depiction on this plaque here um, There's a bat, you know representing Dracula turning into a bat. This is Vlad the Impaler. Paler. Uh, it's very kitschy <laughs> kind of tacky <laughs> But I wanted to get a souvenir so I picked up a couple things including this one I didn't know where on earth to hang it in the house. So I decided I'll just hang it in my witchy room. So yep, that's my That's my Dracula Transylvania plaque. So here's a shelving unit where I like to keep extra supplies and uh, and herbs. Um, I've got some some material up on the top there. 
Um, I really like this. It's a wizard smoking blend. I got that online, um, but I use, I don't smoke, so I use it as incense, but it has a lot of really interesting things in it. Um, so yeah, I do like to use this in full moon rituals sometimes uh, for psychic awareness, that sort of thing. Um, and then the first shelf of the uh, first shelf here, I just have an assorted variety of herbs and resins and, and barks and that sort of thing. You know, I keep just, I don't keep big jars of herbs. I keep them in pretty much these smaller size jars. Um, I don't have a whole lot of space, so they work really well. I love these tiny jars. I can hold, you know, just enough herbs or materials that I use. And when they run out, I just replenish them. Generally, I just use a pinch of herbs. In, in quite a few spells, I'm just using a pinch anyway of one herb and another herb and a third one. So these can last me quite a while. Um, so these, these jars are perfect. This is a nice size jar. These size jars are really convenient. I get the jars um, at Hobby Lobby. There's a second row of herbs. Herbs and teas and resins. Um, this is another, now see this is really convenient uh, jar to use also got this from Hobby Lobby. This is great to put resins in or anything that you, you it's easier to scoop out rather than you know dip your fingers in. Um, the jar has like a little loop on the side and it comes with this wooden spoon. So yeah you just open it up and scoop out your resin or whatever you're working with. Real convenient to use. Um, in the middle here I've got some oils that I bought from the Earth's Cauldron. I don't think they sell them anymore. I love them though. Um, I've got Louisiana Hoodoo, Hot Foot uh, Oil, High John the Conqueror, and Louisiana, or excuse me, New Orleans Man Van Oil. Um, here I've got a Bat's Head Root or a Devil's Pod. I love this thing. I love using it. And I, I just think it looks so cool. It looks creepy, doesn't it? <laughs> and I got some graveyard dirt there. On this middle shelf, I have some items. Um, a lot of this stuff, or a handful of these things, I had um, in a haul like a couple videos ago where I was showing some items that I picked up um, during my European vacations that I use in my practice. Uh, one thing I forgot to show was this this full moon. Uh, this is a full moon tea. Full that means full moon. I got this in Denmark in Copenhagen. So the the ingredients of the tea are in Danish, but I did look them up online so it contains yep so this contains corn flour um, licorice root lemongrass blackberry leaf and marigold so yeah I like to use this in my uh, full moon rituals and then also in that same video I was talking about how I bought this uh, chalice in Dublin in Ireland and I you know so I bought this like two years ago and only about a month ago I managed to um, knock it over and break it. <laughs> so I, I tried to glue it back together. I couldn't glue it back together. So I decided to just use them this way. I found a jar that has an opening um, tall enough to stick the uh, stick the top of the chalice in. I mean, technically, I could drink out of this thing. It's the the bowl is still <laughs> intact, but I think I'm just going to keep it on this shelf, set it there. I mean, I love it so much. I don't want to throw it away, so I'm just going to set it there, and I'll keep like jewelry or maybe herbs. In, in the top part of the chalice and then in the bottom part of the chalice um, <laughs> so this is like the foot or the bottom bottom part of the chalice it actually has a hole in the middle so I use that to keep my quill like my quill pen in there <laughs> it works <laughs> you know I needed a place to put my quill pen anyway so I got my quill in there and then I got you know the, the red ink that goes with the quill pen so there's that and then um, the next shelf is where I keep sort of just my fairy items. Like I used to collect fairies when I was young, and, and I still like to display some of my some of my things. Um, this over here is a I love that. It's a really pretty fairy, and the pink one in the back. Those were um, Christmas ornaments that I keep out. Um, I've got a fairy spells book. We can't see it, but fairy spells book back there. I got some incense. Um, and some various fairy figurines here, but what I really love, one of my favorite items on this shelf is this candle. I love this candle. I got this a couple years ago. Um, it Village Candle put it out. It's a fairy, so the name of the candle is Sugar Plum Fairy. You can't tell on the video, <coughs> but it's a very deep, beautiful purple wax, and I just love the picture on it. It's so beautiful. A beautiful picture of a fairy with the full moon in the background. I just love that candle. Um, another candle I really like, I got this from Yankee Candle. 
excuse me. It doesn't have a fairy on it, but it has a gnome and a toadstool. It just kind of puts me in mind. It's sort of a similar theme. And it's called Enchanted Garden. So yeah, I love this candle too. Then I got another one back there. It says Fairy Garden, another um, inky candle. And then on the very bottom shelf, I just have some extra supplies. That's another extra quill and it comes with ink. Um, some boxes that keep, I keep my pens in and just various miscellaneous supplies. And then this, um, in this drawer is where I keep like extra herbs that I don't have room to put in jars. Um, oak, oak moss, uh, primrose cowslip. I keep some magic flash paper in here. I keep some white oak bark in here. Some extra graveyard dirt. Uh, some extra hawthorns. I use hawthorns and fairy magic and for protection. And then some extra, just a little bit of extra um, organic heather flowers that I use in like fairy magic. So, um, and then down here, I keep um, I keep the candles that I use when I um, cast a circle and draw the four quarters. So, um, I have a I have a green candle that represents earth. I'll put that in the in the north. Um, I have a yellow candle representing air that goes in the east. Red represents fire. I place that in the south um, within my circle. And then finally, this this blue candle represents water. I place that in the west. And then over here, I just have some extra full moon blessed water. I just have some extra of those. So that's my um, shelving unit. Another thing I like to keep in my uh, witchy room is a, a, a life plant and hanging from the plant is this really pretty fairy lantern. Um, I just think it's the prettiest thing. I got this as a gift uh, one year, I think for Christmas, but um, it hangs from the plant and it's got a, a fairy inside there and then a tea light. You can light a tea light in it and I'll move it. Maybe you can see it a little bit. There's the fairy in there. Move it this way. Just really, really pretty. I love that. Um, I do have one closet in my witchy room. Uh, from the closet, I have the kitties. I have two cats, and they have, they call it a cozy climber. <laughs> so basically, they can get in on that hole in the bottom, and they can climb all, right, all the way up to the top. And they like to hang out on the top there and, and just sort of watch over me and watch over the goings-on in my witchy room. Um, but because, because I have their cozy climber, um, facing it towards the room. I'm not able to shut the closet, so I just have a piece of fabric there to close close the closet. So, so in the closet I like to keep, I keep extra herbs and my essential oils in there, um, some miscellaneous magic supplies that you know I don't keep in my shelves and a few other supplies in there and then I also like to keep my uh, my clothing like my ritual I guess you call it ritual clothing um, I'm a solitary practitioner but I still like to wear you know certain dresses and uh, and clothes um, this is one of my favorite dresses right here you, you, it's too dark to see but it's just it's beautiful and these beautiful flowing sleeves and so now I thought I'd just share an idea for picking up um, sort of a variety of herbs at a fairly decent price um, sometimes I buy my herbs in bulk but other times I just like to get a little bit of a lot of different herbs especially herbs that I'd like to try out and one way to do it is to buy a an herb kit and herb kits come in two different sizes one are these two inch by two inch bag sizes and um, it's a great way to um, pick up herbs that are kind of hard to find you know most of them you probably couldn't find in a grocery store and it doesn't cost that much like this is a 12 pack of two by two inch herb bags and I forget how much I paid for it but I didn't pay very much you can decide if you like something like this witchgrass I'm almost out of that I'm gonna pick me up some bulk uh, witchgrass because I use that quite a bit so it's one way to, you know, just check out some herbs. Also, um, a lot of times in my spell work, I'll just use a pinch of herbs. I don't use a whole lot. So when I just use a pinch here and a pinch there, sometimes these bags can last, you know, a fairly decent amount of time. 
So those are the two inch by two inch herbs, but you can also get the three inch by two inch bags. And actually those I prefer, they're still a fair, fairly decent price. So like this is what a three inch by two inch bag looks like. Um, those tiny little jars at eBay that I showed, here I'll pull it up real quick. These size jars from, um, from uh, Hobby Lobby, they actually, if you can actually put these three inch by two inch bagged herbs in these little jars, and it fills them about three fourths of the way up. So if you wanna keep your herbs fresh a little bit longer, you know, these jars might do the trick for you. Um, I prefer the You Choose kits. So like if you were, you can either, like you, if you were to go to eBay or Etsy, in a search bar, you just type in You Choose Herb Kits, and you know, all different options um, come up. So that's one way to do it. And I, I do something similar with the, uh, with my essential oils. What I like to do is buy a kit of essential oils so that I have a whole wide variety of oils to use. And I don't, like, when I make my magical oils or I anoint candles, you know, all the different ways I use my oils, I just use a little bit anyway. I don't use a lot. So these, these are four milliliter bottles. They actually last me a long time. And again, if you buy kits, you just have such choice of a, of a whole big variety of oils. Uh, the, the purchaser that I got these from, I don't see them on eBay anymore. I did go to Etsy and I found a site. They sell 64 of these um, four milliliter bottles of essential oil and they charge $79 in free shipping. So, I mean, it's kind of a lot of money, but you do get, you'll get, these are only, I only have 50 here, but there you get 64 essential oils in this four milliliter size. If you go to Etsy and you type in 64 mega set, so the number 64 and then mega set, um, there's a seller that comes out that, that I'm talking about that sells all these oils. Um, so if you figure the price per vial of oil, that's, that's a fairly decent price. So anyway, those are just some ideas there for essential oils and herbs. And um, so that's the end of my first part of my witchy tour. And um, in a little while, I'm going to post the second part of the tour.